of centers around people whose journeys that I'm intrigued by um, and people whose journeys I believe that people can learn from. So we talk about everything from identity to comparison to um, embracing your uniqueness to collaboration. So just you know everything that we believe that is important for people to learn on their life journey and to share on their life journey as well. Are you guys excited? Are you as excited as me to be here? Yes? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So there's another session going on here, right? So we gotta be like the cool kids on the block so that our session is like really loud. Yes? We're good? Um, thank you so much for being here. I do not take this for granted at all. Um, I'm really, really excited about this session. So today's guest is someone that I think is really amazing. Um, I'm going to read his bio real quick, and then we will bring him on stage. He was born and raised in Wari Delta State. Temisan Emmanuel has been on an amazing journey of exploration and self-discovery. He's a graduate of the University of Lagos, where he bagged a diploma in law and a degree in history and strategic studies. His passion for the arts informed his decision to venture into modeling, and he has walked major runways, been a muse for leading Nigerian designers, and featured on magazine covers and editorials. He is well known for Tea with Tay, a one-minute tea time video where he shares life's experiences laced with humor on social media. Besides being a comedian on social media and a communication strategist, the multi-talented lad excels in everything from singing in church choir to hosting red carpets and TV presenting. Temisan has hosted the Future Awards Africa 25 Under 25 Awards and has worked with clients such as Uber, YouTube, Swatch, Nescafe, FCMB, and Zenit Bank, amongst others. With a penchant for med media relations and content creation, the very ambitious Temisan is set to take on the world one dream at a time. Please welcome on stage Temisan. <laughs> Temisan. Thank you, Temisan, for being here. Well, you sold my I know market it's been like a long. <laughs> I know it's been a long. It's, it's been a long weekend for you, but yeah, you made it. So sorry for coming late, guys. I'm tired of explaining why my face is like this. I went for a procedure. You know, this our business is all about vanity. Anyway, thank you for having me. Can I take this thing off? Yeah, you can. I, th I think I'm going to do the same, actually. Yeah. So, so Timmy san um, we're going to just run through this conversation, have fun with it. You know, be I'm honest. Excited. Be honest, because if you're not honest, we'll find out on social media. I'm a very media, honest person. The real gist told. of yeah. it. Okay, so when I was introducing you and I was talking about, um, you know, the different things that you do, you're multidimensional, and that's really um, exciting to see because I consider myself, you know, a multipotentialite as well. How do you typically, like, identify yourself? To be honest, even when people ask me what I do, I find it hard to tell them because I just feel like I'm an all-round creative. Yeah, so some days I want to be on sets, you know, a TV production. Some days I want to be singing in church. Some days I want to... Uh, be so I work in communications, yeah. I worked in communications, so some days I, was, I just want to be in the office helping clients reach their goals and everything. Right. So for me, I have a lot of talent, and every day I just wake up, I just want to explore all the more. So that's what I'm about. That's lovely. But then, when you were like growing up, you know, what did you want to be? Okay, so I wanted to be an actor, okay, yeah, but now worried about me, yeah. So <laughs> My granny say, <laughs> I know pay your school fees, maybe you go to yeah. maybe you go to go kiss people wife for film. So That's for some reason I, yeah. So she wanted to be an engineer. I'm like, what's it because I I go to load. <laughs> so engineer from where to where. So I somehow, somehow we agreed that I would study law because it was the next best thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean in the art class. So I studied law, but I was miserable for a year. So I got a diploma, but I moved to history. Um, if anybody had advised me, I would have done creative arts, but I didn't have anybody to advise me, so I did history, yeah. But I modeled for four years. All the time I was in like I was modeling, I modeled for four years. Um, I didn't do acting because I wasn't sure anymore. Mm. Do you understand? I wasn't sure. I loved modeling. I thought I was going to be a supermodel in Paris, flying everywhere, New York. But somehow, I think God always has his purpose for us, and... Right. 
I think everything that I did, starting from modeling up to now, just prepared me for now. So eventually, when I got out of school, I got a job because, to be honest, modeling wasn't really paying the bills. So I got a job in communications. I was doing all my communications. But in that same office, they had like a production department. Okay. And I saw them creating content with people. There were presenters coming in. I'm like, I can do this thing. Oh, this to do my body. Oh. So I found my way into that department. And I started hosting some of their shows. Then fast forward to um, 2018. I, I always used to think of things in my head. They were stupid. I used to crack people up in the office. There were stupid things I used to think about. But they were serious things, but they were always laced with humor for me. So I just started putting it out there. So one video at a time. People were loving it. People wanted more. On a, ra- on a random day, I was with my teacup, mm. yeah? And I went to the car and I saved my, good morning, Instagrammers. And somebody just said, that, that is it. This is the tea. So I started calling it tea with tea. So the thing just kind of grew into something bigger than even me, Seth. So then the opportunity to ask that came from doing tea with tea. I was like, wow. Then stage came. I could finally sing. Because, I mean, I've always wanted to sing. So everything just started working out itself. And that's how I landed here. So did you... Uh, so you've got, like, the red cup, for instance, that you yeah. use on, on there. Was that something that was accidental? Okay. So or was there a plan for it? I think I've shared this story on social media. I don't know if you follow me, Sha. Um, that red cup, eh? So I resigned from my job. Um, so I had to move out of the house that I was living in. In 20, 2018, yeah-ish. So that red cup, my friend where I go squat for a house mm. for Aja had a red cup in his house. So I was, all I was in that time was just creating content because I wasn't working, you understand? Right. So in the morning when I wake up, I'm like, good morning, Instagrammers. And I just kept using that red cup. So people now started associating me with the red cup. So when I was leaving his house, he said, yeah, take the red cup. <laughs> <laughs> I dash you. So when I got, I started using the red cup. I just liked the red cup. Not like anything was, I was going to print like on my cup, like a white cup or something, but I don't even like red. <laughs> but <laughs> so I started using the cup, people started associating me, associating me with the cup. Right. So they would see me, oh, that guy with the red cup. I'm like, eh. So it's not my brand asset, so I held it, started using it. So even when the cup broke, you bought uh, another I went one. to the market to rush. <laughs> I bought three. I said, this is a business now. Right. So I bought the cup and I started using it. And people started associating me with the cup, and I like the fact that people know. The guy with the red cup. So, right. I've been using that cup for the longest time. How how did your family react to all of this? Oh, so they how did love it. They love it. They get celebrities for their family. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so um, did they didn't understand it at first. Okay. So I, I told you, my granny said, "Why you? I go pay for school fees, me you go to right. do and this." Mm-hmm. So it didn't make sense. First of all, even when I was choosing uni lag. Oh my, my family members didn't worry. We we're all born and raised there. I mean, the, the most that we would travel is maybe to the UK, or, but nobody was in Lagos. So when I said Unilag, they said, ah. I said, yes, I'm going to Unilag. So for like four years when I was modeling, it didn't make sense to my granny because she was about like, just come and mm. do this school and come and look for a job, you understand? So when people started, so she works in, uh, she has a nine to five. My granny has a nine to five in PTI in Wari there. So people now started reaching out to her. I said, are you Timisan's grandma? She said, hey, hey. <laughs> nah, so, so I think she just became proud of the things I was doing. I wasn't bringing like, bad reports home. I had cousins who were doing terrible things. They were starting to see me on TV. You know, so my first interview ever, she was watching it, and I mentioned her. She was so happy. But my granny is very tough. So it took her a while for her to admit that she's actually proud. So just like, oh, what did you do? Shall you find a job? You know, so, right. But over time, they, they're happy. They see that I'm going places. So they're in on it. That's yeah. awesome. Because um, I know that a lot of times, like, you know, when you're pursuing your passion and, and things that you're interested in doing, um, especially where it's unconventional, you know, families and friends, you know, sometimes tend to not really understand that path. And so it takes a while to convince them. Like, so for instance, I can speak for myself, mm. right? No matter how much I accomplish or what I do and the trajectory that my life is going in, there's still times when my father says things like, oh, you know, are you sure you won't go and do a master's? 
I'm like, with everything I've built in this life. I know, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So there are times where, you know, family... Don't we'll, mind we'll them. When I first started doing TVT, they thought I was running mad. They really worried this one. Right. <laughs> but I was a model. Like, I would just normally take pictures and then I started speaking pidgin English and saying things. And a lot of people were not following me. They would share my videos, though, but they not go follow me. Mm. Like, I was this one saying. So over time, the brand now became cool. So they're like, oh, I know Temu. So I'm like, oh, I know you too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but initially, they didn't understand it. Yeah. yeah they didn't understand it. Yeah. But. I really wanted to do it. It was where my heart was. Do you understand? So I just did it. Like that's everybody had to adjust little little Sasha. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you know, whenever people think about uh, Instagram comedians or people who generally create content online, um, the thought process is oh it's so it's so easy, like it happens overnight, you know, is a one one hit type thing. So you start putting out stuff. They say you're talented and that's why, you know, you have all these numbers, your community is growing, you're getting all these brand um, endorsements or opportunities. Uh, but can you kind of walk us through your typical process, like with the things that you create? First of all, I don't like to be referred to as an Instagram comedian. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just a guy who creates content. Right. Uh, for me... Things that I see, things that I experience, my day-to-day -day informs TBT. So creating content for me is not... Is, well, it can be easy, it might not be easy. For me, I don't, so I don't shoot my content. Mm. I just hold my camera. Good morning, Instagram. I tell you what I want to tell you and I keep it moving. For some people, they have to create, um, like shoot different angles. They're acting theirs out. I don't do that. But sometimes... Content creation is not easy because there's some things that you want to put out and you're just like, uh, this doesn't make sense. This content might not fly with people, my community. Um, and for me, I'm very particular about what I put out. So, like, I'm a feminist to the teeth. Mm. So if anything I want to say would somehow truncate that my stance, I don't do it. So for me, I've moved on from just catching cruise on Instagram to actually create a content that will edify people and also make them laugh in the same way. So I have to be careful at what I choose or what I choose to put out. So all of these things inform like... Yeah, I definitely yeah. think that's one of the things that drew me to you yeah. as well is your ability to, um, you know, create and put things out, but then to also make sure that it's in alignment with your value system. Yeah. Um, you talk a lot about you know, who you are as a person, what you believe in. Um, one of the things you also talk a lot about is actually your spirituality as well. Yeah. So, so how, how does your spirituality, you know, sort of come into play with your professional life in general? Like, how do you navigate that? Everything that's happening to me is God. Like, how many worry boys would just carry themselves come from worry, come here, how many years after you're thriving in this space, you're doing great things. For me, I just think that my life is like a miracle because every day, like, it feels like I'm watching somebody else's like movie do you understand so i'm very in touch with my spirituality it informs some of my content sometimes like, i can be praying and i would hear the holy spirit say okay tell me this is your next content for tomorrow mm. it, it sounds stupid but <laughs> that's it so for me i can't even go away from that space and sometimes when i go away from that space my god space i will call it i can see the difference do you understand Although I literally everything that I do these days, I'm just like, God, what is the next step? Right. What is happening after? What, this brand, oh God. At some point, I started asking God, why did you give me such a platform? Because everybody have, people have platforms. But what, what is my why? Why am I here? You understand? So I think the more I follow God and his instructions, it just helps me create a proper brand, a whole brand, that even when I don't even know what my next steps are, God, is, God has already laid the path for me. That's why I always, and I always remind people that you can also be a celebrity or you can also be an influencer and be cool and be Jesus, be, by, be tongue, um, how do you say the talking for my church? Mm -hmm. Be um, tongue speaking, Bible believing and whatever, and also be cool. Do you understand? So I also want to sell to people that you can be a Jesus boy and be the coolest man in the room. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, I love it. And, and how does that come into play? Thank you, Muna, the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> how does that come into play when you are dealing with clients as well, right? So can you, can you remember or, I mean, you, can you talk about like any moment where you, you, you had a moment where, you know, you were trying to work with a client and you felt like maybe they weren't aligned with your values or something? Or has that have ever happened to you? Or how would you deal with that? I don't, so, I mean, so when I cl get client briefs, it's never about like, really, there's nothing religious about any of the speculations there. And I don't think that, I mean... So I'm not even talking about religion. I'm just saying, like, in general, so you're, you're you, you know, you have certain values that you are okay. aligned with. But I get what you're saying now. You so for me, there are certain brands I would never touch because I cannot defend it. Okay. So it doesn't align with my own values. I'm So people that sell sexual health, that's their medicine that help you, they think help you perform right. better. <laughs> I'm not going to touch them. Because I can't, like, that's not the kind of thing association I want to have. Right. Do you understand? So for that, I'm very particular about the brands. And brands also know who their target audiences are, or our target audience is. So they come to you knowing what you're about already. So I've restricted my influence into mostly banks, um, FMCGs, um, just some institutions that I can vouch for. Mm. Do you get? So I think I'm good. I've never experienced that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you, I want to talk about programming a little bit, you know, so um, a lot of times we go, we go through life and we realize that, you know, we have so much programming that we've picked up over time, right? So whether it's cultural, whether it's religious, uh, you know, we have these different things that people have told us. Uh, sometimes our environment also programs us, right? And then when you get into your adult life, you have to start unlearning a lot of the things that you have learned, right? Can you tell me about a programming that you have had to unlearn in your life? And, and how did you, you know, navigate that as well? For the longest time, that's why I went to zone modeling first. I thought I was too effeminate to be in front mm. of a camera. I thought there was something wrong with me so much that mm -mm, if, they miss, if you go on TV, they go stone the TV, mm. you go for... So, and this was a problem for me, a big problem because all the things that I wanted to do, I couldn't do it. So if I'm, if I'm, so my gesticulations can give me away, but if I'm in a, on the cover of a magazine, I'm standing like this, you know, going to wear my eye, my eye, they blink my eye 20 times. Do you understand? So it was a huge problem for me. I had to get me my mentor. I was crying at some point. I'm like, oh my God, I really want to be these people that I see on TV, but I'm not alpha male. I'm not that guy that ah, walk into the room, girls go run. They love me, but uh, I'm not their thirst trap anyway, so. I, uh, some people beg to differ. Uh, well, well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for the longest time, that was my problem. I thought I was so effeminate. I went to you like they were cussing me out for being the most, the most effeminate guy in my department. So I had to grow into this person. Mm. And now, I just realized that this is even my power. Because I walk into a place, I'm the best dressed person there. I'm like, uh huh. Mm. That's part of it. So I'm, I'm Libra, and naturally, if I leave my house, I'm looking at myself. I can spend 20 hours in my house just to attend an, a one hour event, just right. to make sure I look good. So these things that are informing my, uh, the person that I, I became eventually. So, um, for example, I grew up with my granny and my mother and women. You know, I think women are one of the wisest sets of people alive or ever created. Because the kind of wisdom that I got from my granny, I don't think I'll get it from anybody else. Mm. And that's what even informs most of the things that I say. Do you understand? It's like my granny would say, <laughs> Fa would lay egg, yanji, prepare Some funny, funny things that she used to say. And these things informed all these things that I'm doing now. Right. So I'm just like, you even have a power that you don't even know. And every day, it's hard. Every day, I'm just beginning to peel all the scales of like, okay, this is what you used to think about yourself, but mm -mm, no, you're better than this. You understand? Mm -hmm. So reading helped me, mentoring helped me. And at some point, you get to your life, just like, anything you want to me happen. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, if I'm not going to get booked because I maybe blink my eye a bit too much or my gesticulations are funny, then... They don't, I'm not the one supposed to be doing that job, you understand? Mm. So those are some of the things that actually affected me at the beginning, but mm. I'm getting better. I love it. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happens sometimes just 
in life behind the scenes because in the position that you're in, you know, it's easy to think that you're always happy and, you know, you're always getting all the attention. Um, you're always out there and, you know, you have to continuously uh, be excited, right, and be positive. And life is not always about positivity. Like, as much as we want to be positive, there are moments where, you know, you have down moments and, and you're the cool guy. So the guy that makes everybody laugh, right? So everyone's like, oh, Temisan needs to be always high tempo, positive, energized, right? Do you ever feel, do you ever have moments where, you know, you have a downtime? How do you, and how do you navigate that downtime? A lot of times, time? though. Hmm. Okay, this is a safe space. Everybody's here. We're sharing, yeah? yeah? Uh, at the beginning of this year, I could not re put out any video. I, I did a video about it. Uh, so I was talking to one of my friends, um, Titi, Titi Lockwood, the poet. And I'm like, Titi, I cannot even put out any video because mm. I'm not even feeling up to it. And my brand is based on honesty. I cannot come out fake what I'm not feeling. Yeah. Do you understand? And she said, put that out. Do you understand? So for me, when I first started out as Timmy San and doing T with T, the first rush, the rush that came from knowing that people loved me, I was invited to all the parties, I was living. Do you get? I'm like, I love attention and attention is coming to me great. After a while, I just became tired of everything, the space. 2019, I hosted the Future Awards. Do you know after the Future Awards, I thought I'd not achieved anything in 2019? Imagine that. So, there's some times when I'm just like, oh my God, Timmy, so what are you doing with your life? What is the next step for you? How are you going? Like, what direction are you even going? Look at other people. Then, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. Say it again. Comparison is the thief of joy. Word. So, I'd had a fantastic year. The people that were, say, three, four years in this industry had not even gotten to the place where I was. Mm. But to me, in my own space, in my own quiet time, I was like, Tim, so what are you doing with your life? Hey. Then, around November mm. last year, everybody was in Dubai. That thing paid me, you know, like, <laughs> hey, God. I'm like, Tim, so you're such a... It's such an achiever. Why did you not book you for Dubai? So I would try to do that Dubai trip. They don't come even pick me. I say, ha, you are not even achieve anything. <laughs> See my future awards. So, so many things that happened to me in my mind. I started feeling unhappy. And on Instagram, you know, in, on Instagram, hmm, everybody's flossing. No? Right. People will just cry from their bathroom, come outside. They'll smile. Oh my God, a beautiful day. <laughs> so, all of these things started affect him. I'm just like, mm. oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? And another thing, when you just start out, I didn't want to be a one-hit wonder. You understand? So, ah, this boy just come outside, the hot, 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 hot. We have seen people like that that came out one year, they were everywhere, and after a while, they just, so all of these things were affecting me mentally. Right. So, I started doing a lot of praying, reading, and whatever. So, in those times, that's when I realized that a lot of people are going through the same things, and my vulnerability will help other people you understand, like, get their own deliverance, if that's right. the word. So when I shared that, people started sending me DMs that, oh my God, Samson, we're feeling the same way you're feeling. Uh, you're not alone. I just realized that this is everybody's problem. Even your faves have the same problem. And the only way to get out of this space is to share, to be vulnerable. Um, like Brene Brown said, vulnerability is one of the greatest strengths that you ever have. So that's when I started just helping myself and just doing better with myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how do you typically deal with failure? So have you ever had a moment where, you know, things didn't work out exactly as you had envisioned it to be? Uh, I'm not going to lie. You have like, a story for us? There. Okay, let me tell you. So I cannot deal with rejection. I cannot deal with rejection. And I'm working on it too because if you have to do stuff in life or be anybody in life, you have to deal with a couple of rejections. But I can like, it kills me, Adora. Mm -hmm. If I reach out to you and said I wanted to be on this thing and you said no, I won't speak to you for like a while. Because I cannot. Oh because yeah. maybe it's insecurity, I, I think. Right. I mean, coming from where I'm coming from, I think that. So automatically, I just feel like, oh my God, oh, maybe they don't like me enough. Or maybe they, they, are, they can see through me that I'm actually a fraud. Mm. Do you understand? So certain things, I can't deal with rejection. Failure, like, I, I, I go for the low hanging fruits. Do you understand? And that's a problem. That's the I'm working on it, but that's the problem. So failure for me actually sets me back like mm. ten times like, back, 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 backer, backer. Uh -huh. So I I try to 
avoid anything that would fail. But these days, I begin to learn that this is all part of it. Because all the times where I, f- all the points where I failed in life, eh, they were comebacks. My comeback was fantastic. Mm. But at the point, I didn't know that, oh, these were the learnings that I needed to pick from that, those failures. You understand? I didn't want to experience them. But with benefit of hindsight, I'm just like, Timmy, you, you left your job, you were squatting somewhere as a 2018. Now that you're flossing, you can even afford to travel. <laughs> okay. So all of these things, I'm just like, these things are learnings. But when you're inside, Adora, you know, I, like that you're, I like that you're honest about that because a lot of times when you do ask people about failure, you know, the, the natural response, right, is, you know, the way I deal, deal with failure is I'm not afraid of failure. I mean, I mean, I go, I like but but, but it's, it's valid, you know, that the way you feel about it because I know that there are times where I say to myself, I'm fearless and I'm not afraid of failure. But then there are it's times. It's really true. It, it does, yes. There, I mean, are you not I, afraid I, of failure? I'm one of those people who I believe you know, doesn't really view v- failure as failure, right? So I view it as a lesson. Okay. But, but in the exact moment where it happens, there are times where, I mean, I feel it, right? I allow myself to embrace whatever it is I'm feeling per time, but knowing that that is not my whole story, right? That that is like a part of my story, but it's not the story itself, right? So um, I think it differs per person, but... Um, I like that you're able to acknowledge how you process failure because it's important that people hear the different sides of how you can process it, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about collaboration because we, we, we live in an environment um, where there are a lot of young creative people, but these young creative people typically exist in silos, right? So everyone kind of wants to do their own thing most of the time. Um, and one of the things I found, and, I, and every time I speak with young people, I'm like, oh, you know, you're, you're all sending, you're sending us invitations for um, this event, but then your best friend is doing the same event and is inviting us to their event, and then your best friend's friend is doing the same thing, and, you know, which one are we going to pick to attend, right? Is there a way you guys can just come together and do one that you would probably get more of us to support, right? Um, so for you, you know, what, what is collaboration? And, and, you know, are you open to collaboration? How do you very much so. navigate uh, that? I'm very open to collaborations. Mm-hmm. I feel like it actually helps us pull our strengths together. You achieve more with collaborations. But I'm very particular about the people that I collaborate with. Mm. So if you do have the same values, do you share the same ideas? Because if you go for Lopez, you go Lokoja, and you go Abuja, Abi, you go Delta States, and they're not going to meet for the same place. You understand? Right. So I always look out for the people that I collaborate with. Do we want the same things? Do we have the same values? You understand? So tea with tea grew from just me sipping my tea cup in the mornings to ha- actually having people on the show or whatever I do, that one mini thing I do. Yeah, so, but even when I was choosing those people, um, I was very particular about those people. Mm. And some people said, oh, Tim, you only do mostly women. I'm like, I get the women that come to this thing. These men, I don't get them. So, maybe that's why you're not seeing a lot of men. But I've done a few men. It's just the truth is that I naturally just work better with women. Right. You get? With m- I w- okay, they don't come now. What do you want to talk? Do you understand? With women, I know how to enter them. I know how to deal with them. Okay. And sometimes... <laughs> Sorry. I, when I said I know how to enter them, now pigeon cool. I speak, I beg. So, um, there are a few men that I see that do great things, yeah? Um, eventually, I reach out to them, but I'm just really particular about what I want to mm. give up because at the end of the day, Adora, this is my work. This is... This, this thing would... It can either inspire or be detrimental to be people that are um, consuming this content. Right. Do you understand? And I don't want to ever say that, eh, I didn't know that he was like this so, or something, or having to defend myself after. So if I do a video with somebody and I respect their values, I'm like, yes, I did it. I, I enjoyed doing this. You understand? This person is, was right for this particular um, content. You understand? So that's what I do. Collaborations are fantastic. It's if you they say if you want to go far, I bet you You know you know what I talk. If you want to go far, what uh, you you don't go alone. If you want to go fast, 
go alone. But if you want to go far, uh-huh. you don't go. Alone. So if you, you want go to go far, guys, I I want to go far. That's why I'm selecting the people that I, I want to work with. Yeah, but collaborations are very important and they help you. You yeah. said something. You said this is my work, and and I thought that was very interesting. You know, where so where do you kind of see all of this going? So all of the stuff you're doing, do you Hollywood. ever envision it and see yourself somewhere? Paint that picture for us. Okay, so um, the your dreams are basically things that you have seen before. I, I, you know, Ebuka is in a fantastic space right now in, in Nigeria, but I think that there can be four or five Ebukas mm. in the same space because um, the sky is big enough for all of us. Uh, but I don't want to be an Ebuka. People keep saying, oh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the line you're towing is very Ebuka. I'm like, no, I love him. I feel like I would take a lot of things from him, but um, where I'm going to is a much bigger place. Um, I see myself like the James Cording of Nigeria. Right. Somebody who would create content that people would love, be a household name that um, when your kids, when families are sitting out together, they're like, oh, please turn on TV. I want to see Timmy Do you understand? I want to be able to host the biggest events in Nigeria. I want to be able to be in movies where I want to be in, where I can be myself. Make, just, just be a whole brand. That's what I've always wanted to be. You understand? So for me, I don't know the how of it. But to come to me, that's why my journey is like my God experience. You understand? That's why God is always important in my own because I don't know these things. You understand? Mm. But I know that I know what I want to be. Okay, I know the things that I don't want to be. Mm. So when I see them coming, I say no. You understand? But my how, maybe I don't have it. But eventually, I think that God is going to just arrange my path so much that I land at my destination. Yeah. Thanks. Um. When you you talked about like purpose in your bio as well, like you talked about wanting to live a purpose driven life, and and this is something you also talk about on on Instagram um, as well. What does what does that journey mean to you? So when you say purpose driven life, like what what is purpose to you? And and do you know what your purpose is in life? I think I'm still figuring it out. Though. To be honest, I'm not going to come here and say, oh, this is the purpose that God has... I don't know. I, I think I'm still figuring it out because some, some days I'm just like, mm, God, I don't get it. Mm. Some days I'm overwhelmed. So there's a song that says, um, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. There's some days that I'm clueless. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't even know what my next steps are mm-hmm. so purpose for me i just feel like it's it's in line with what god has promised me do you understand i'm at the place where i feel good about what i'm doing but is this really my purpose is there something greater and every day i think i'm unlocking those those boxes and just like okay this is this is part of the journey you understand so my purpose is i feel like it's a long journey that i'm going to continue going on and just unraveling like a lot of puzzles and things going on but for me it's just constantly every day I just pray for God to just reveal what it is for me and I don't think that purpose can just be revealed I feel like God if even if God shows you your purpose your entire purpose I think that you probably not even understand it that's why he gives you what you can take per time and per season so I just feel like I'm unraveling yeah but then do you ever feel like you're not in, like, do you ever have moments where you feel like you're not in alignment? Like, do you, do you, do you ever feel like that? I can't, I might so, be... So, so do you ever have moments where you feel like I'm in alignment with what it is that I'm meant to be doing? And Rebo, then there are times when you say to yourself, yes. I'm not, I'm not in alignment. As no. Well. Like, you know, like, I'm where, like, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Mm. I'm not, the full picture is not, I've not has not been painted there, uh, Yeah. But I know that where I am, sweet, this is, this is it. Do you understand? So I want more. Yeah. I want more, but I just like, this is it, Timmy. This is what you've always wanted. Do you understand? How do you know this is it? So like, how, how do you know that? Like, can you tell us how, how that feels? Okay, like... <sighs> so are there certain things that happen, you know, day to day that make you feel like, okay, yes, so this is it. Um, like, this is what um, I'm meant to be doing. Uh... uh I was in traffic one day and one woman was shouting from my car. So my, fr- s- <laughs> my friend was driving, yeah? So the woman was shouting from my car and was, she was doing this. Mm. My friend was like, what is this? So the woman was shouting like, Tiwite, Tiwite. 
So my friend was like, what's wrong with this woman? Do you understand? And she was like, oh my God, I watch your content. You're amazing. Then she came to my DMs and said um, that she had a terrible day at work, but she has been binging on my videos and that it just lifted her up and everything. I was like, this is it. This is my life. You understand? For me to be able to create stuff that people enjoy so much that they don't only laugh, but they're inspired. When I shared the video about me moving from being a squatter somewhere in Aja to moving to my own space, so things happening for me, I Till today, I don't have people sending me um, messages about that. And that's all I need, really. That's, that's when I know that I'm in the right space. I'm doing the right things. And it can't... That's alone, eh? That's why I always, I always say um, my content should inspire people. Mm. That's why when I say this is my work, I cannot go out of my values because this, this is so important because now people, people's lives are tied to mine. If I don't put out a video in a day or two, people are already messaging me saying, what fun? What's happening? You understand? So I, th- I think that's what actually gives me that mm. satisfaction. That, mm, to me, say, you're doing something right. And yeah. I love that because, you know, that brings home um, what purpose really is, right? It's yeah. really about who is going to benefit as a result of your existence in this world, right? So, I mean, the fact that you feel like, you know, people are being impacted by mm. what it is that you're creating, then you are purposeful and you are yeah. living a purpose, you know, driven life because that's really what it is, it's about. And look at me, I like attention. So, <laughs> so you're enjoying that. It just that's works, part, I that, think. That's part, that's part of the fun of yeah. being in alignment yeah. with what it is that you're I doing. I live for attention. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, right. yeah, that. Can you, um, we're going to wrap up because we have about five minutes, but can you uh, tell me about a quote or a mantra that you live by and what that quote means to you? There's so many of them. Because I'm reading a new book and. Um, I hope the new book you're reading is this thing called Purpose. Well, I said that you already packed it for me, so I'm going to read it. But uh, I'm reading The Secret, and okay. I don't... There's no particular quote right now, but... Ah, that's a book. Mm. Jesus. So, at the beginning of the year, today I was running mad because I didn't know what to do with my life, yeah, and all of that. So, my mentor, Chudi, Jidon, mm. or you might know him, gave me that book and said, Temisan, read this book. Mm. My sister and I did to, to come to reach to do. It's like that's my Bible after my Bible. Cut, yeah? cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Bring this thing called purpose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait, now your own go. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is your book after your Bible. See. So he's starting again. I know this is a fantastic book. Okay. Yeah. So, so you were guys, talking about my this book. This is yeah. my Bible. And okay. after my Bible, I mean, yeah. I'm joking. But uh, <laughs> Adora, I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, tell Have us. you all read The Secrets? I've read it. Make it no blessed idea, Chris. I've read it. Have you read it? Yes. Have you all read it? Solid book. Ha. Go and buy it too. Go and buy it. So, you know, when you're reading the book, you're like, Rebo, shut up. Like you're speaking in tongues right. because the things that you want to hear, the things that you need, mm. that book gave it to me. So there's no quote. If it's quotes, I don't write plenty of quotes for my, for my book. But that's the only thing I know that I read now. I'm just like, oh my God, this is it. This is it. Yeah, but is there like a, a mantra or something that you, you, know, you typically write, like, will live by? Like, so for instance, my biggest mantra, and I think everyone who follows me on social media knows this, um, is time is a great storyteller, right? Because I believe that no matter what it is that you do in life, like, you cannot beat time. Like, you have to wait, you know, for certain things in your life to manifest. And that's just kind of how it works. Well, well, do you have well over, when I was dealing with a lot of insecurities, I just started saying to myself, mm. you are enough. Mm. You are valid. You understand? Those are the things that... I when it. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, Timisa, you are enough. You are valid. Your, your stories are valid. You are, you are here for a purpose. Mm. So maybe you are enough is the thing that I always mm. say. That's, that's powerful. That should be my mantra, but... That's very powerful. You know, say, if you're not plenty, we're not the film. You understand? So, but you are enough is just the only thing enough, that... <laughs> because me, I would... I have my sticky notes everywhere in my room. Today, when I read one book, I don't say, this is my new quote for today. This is what I'm going to live by. But I think the entirety of my being right now is the only mantra that can actually suffice is you are, you are enough. enough. Yeah. I love that. That's very powerful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so for much for having me. Um, it's been a beautiful experience. Thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Let's blue get a note. picture. Yes. We use my face like this. <laughs>